for uh, up with us at this point in time to close things out. Now, Vince is the head trader at Trading Winds, and he's been actively trading for over the past 30 years. So if you think about it, between Stephen Bigelow, Stephen Primo, and Vince Vora, we got 40, 40, and 30, 110, 115 years of a trading experience just in these last three hours. And over this period of time with Vince, his focus has been on teaching people how to become better traders. What could be more noble than that? <laughs> and his systems range from simple to sophisticated and can be used in any market condition to trade stocks, options, Forex, and futures. And, you know, with that, I'm really excited that we have Vince here. His topic today is going to be a simple technique for trading volatile markets. Why simplicity and consistency is going to be the key to your success, his favorite simple strategy for trading with the trend, and how simple moving averages can be your best friend. And, you know, it's interesting. I've seen a pattern, Pat, with those that have been trading for some time. And maybe it's what happens is you get, you know, older and wiser and more experienced. You seem to really appreciate simplicity over complexity. <laughs> and I think, you know, from that standpoint, this is a great way to have Vince join us. Vince, how are you doing? It's great to have you here with us this afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Pat, it's great to see you. Uh, it, it, I'm so happy that you're doing well. I know it's been a, a, a tough month or so in Texas, and I'm, I'm glad to see you're doing well. I'm doing super. Thank you. Excellent. Yep, we're doing great. You doing okay too, buddy? Yeah, hanging in there. I mean, it, it's a perfect day to talk about volatile markets. Yeah, I uh, know. <laughs> it's been crazy. Couldn't, couldn't have set it up any better. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. Well, listen, you've got an hour to share with us what you're going to do today. We're delighted to have you here closing things out, Vince. And so grab the screen and go for it, buddy. Okay, excellent. Thank you again. And welcome, everybody. I'm glad to be with you here today. It's, it's been very active in the markets uh, this morning, um, but hopefully you're all, all doing very well uh, with your trading. Uh, again, uh, today my topic is to show you really how simple trading can be. And I, I know that may seem a little odd for, for any of those who, who have tried it. You know, it's, it's anything but simple, but really, as, as Roly was saying, over time, the, the longer you spend in the markets, uh, the more you do realize that simple is best. And, and I'm hoping to show you that today. Again, my, my name is Vince Ford. I'm, I'm the head trader here at Trading Wins. Um, I have been trading for over three decades. And uh, over that time, we've developed several strategies. But again, my focus over the last few years has been on coaching. Um, and so I'm really happy to be here with you and share some of the concepts that uh, we've been using uh, over the past few years. Please, uh, I do have to remind you that trading can be risky, so please don't trade with real money until you are completely comfortable with the system that you are using. Now, um, what I'm going to be covering today is, uh, again, a simple uh, technique that you can use, actually several techniques that you can use, all of which are very, very simple. You choose the one that suits your style the best, but consistency is key. With any, any strategy you use, any concept you use, it has to be consistently. If you, you know, switch from one to the other, you're not going to see the same type of results that you would if you stuck to just one. Um, I am going to show you how moving averages, simple moving averages can be your best friend on a day like today. Um, and then I'm going to show you uh, my favorite strategy. Um, and of course, if you have questions, feel free um, to ask away and, uh, and we'll cover those as well. I will try to bring up my chat panel um, here, but uh, let me see if I can get it here. Yeah, I should be able to get that. But if not, uh, Roly, if you see anything, by all means, interrupt. If not, we'll try to leave some time at the end. So let's get to the charts here. And let me show you, um, this is just a very clean chart. All we have here are candlesticks. So I'm not going to focus on, on candlestick methods. I'm sure uh, my friend Stephen Bigelow went through a number of them. He's really the guru of candlesticks. Um, I want to show you how simple it is to use them just to read the market overall. 
um, you really don't need indicators to trade with. Now, most of us do trade with them. We all have our favorites. I'll show you what mine are. But really, when it comes down to it, what trading really is, is, is a tug of war between buyers and sellers. And whoever's in control, that's the way the market is going to move. And so your job as a trader is just to identify who's currently in control. And you can do that on any given bar or over a series of bars. And whether you're you know, trading intraday, say a five minute chart, a 15 minute chart, or whether you have, you know, you swing trade using a daily time frame or invest more on, on weekly and, and monthly. It really doesn't matter. The same techniques apply. Okay. So to, to begin with, what, one of the things that's as easy as it gets when it comes to trading is identifying the turning points, right? And by that, we mean the pivots. So like, here's a low pivot and here's a high pivot, right? Right here. And, and so you can, you know, just, just take your drawing tool and mark these along the way, right? Mark the lows uh, and mark the highs and so on. And, you know, all you have to look for is either a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. So you'll see that this high here is higher than this one. This low here is higher than that one. So if you cons consistently get higher highs, right? There's another one higher. And you consistently get higher lows, right? You can mark this one here. You can mark this one here, right? And this one here again. And so far, you know, we haven't preached that. So, so far, you know, this is John Deere and company, right? DE. You can see that we have higher highs and higher lows. So we're clearly in a strong uptrend here. Buyers are clearly, you know, in control overall. Sellers may be winning individual battles, but the battle overall has been won by buyers. And as long as that continues, you, you can and should expect that shares of, uh, of John Deere continue to go higher. So that's one simple technique. The other is to look at an individual bar. How, how can we tell who won that individual battle, right? So when we talk about candlesticks here, if, if you see a green candle, it means it, it's green for a reason. It means that, you know, it, it closed higher than where it opened that day. That, that's why it, it's colored that way. And if it's red, it means that it closed lower than where it opened. So a simple way to read these is the bottom of the body, the green body, uh, is where it opened. The top of the green body is where it closed. And these little lines, these ticks or, or wicks, whatever you want to call them that appear at the, the top or, or, or the bottom of that body, the candle body, are identify the absolute low and the absolute high for that particular candle. Again, this could be a daily, in this case it is, but it could also be a five minute, 15 minute, whatever. So if it closed higher than where it opened, then chances are the, the bulls won that battle, right? But the, the defining criteria there is how does today's close compare to yesterday's close? Or if it's a five minute bar, you know, how, how did the close of this five minute bar compare to the close of the previous five minute bar? So in this case, you know, we closed much higher than the previous one. And therefore we can say buyers clearly won that one battle, right? And so if you clearly see over and over again, like you do in a stretch back here or back here, right? Or more recently here, right? You're consistently seeing higher lows and higher highs from one candle to the next. So, you know, not only are buyers in control, but they're very much in control, right? So when you just look at a chart, even if you don't plot any, any indicators on there, it's very clear who's winning the battle. Uh, now, if you get sideways action and, and the smaller the bars are, right, the less meaningful they are, the, we call them indecision bars as compared to these big wide candles, which are, which are clearly decisive. And we can easily tell who won those battles, right? Um, but sometimes you'll get sideways action. You get a little back and forth. And so it is 
a little more difficult to read and identify who's clearly in charge. That in and of itself should cause you to pause, right? If you cannot easily identify who is in charge, then you shouldn't be trading that chart, plain and simple. Why make trading difficult on yourself? Make it easy on yourself. In other words, only trade when you can clearly identify who's in charge. Now, by adding other indicators on there, it helps us. It helps us to identify not only who's in charge, but what kind of momentum there is currently behind that existing trend. Okay, so, and, and I'll show you several concepts uh, along the way. Uh, a simple one is to use an indicator uh, like, like the Ichimoku Kinko Hyo. You see it here. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it um, correctly, but it's called the cloud indicator, Ichimoku cloud indicator. It's become much more popular in the last 10 years or so compared to before. But um, this has several different parts to the indicator. Now the span A and the span B are what we call the cloud. And that, is, that really is all that, that we use, that I use anyway. There are four different other moving averages that go with this. What I'm going to do though, is, is uh, just quickly clean this up and make those first four lines that we would otherwise see with this indicator. I'm gonna mark those invisible. So that you'll see now that I have that and I put this on, you'll see that we only get one cloud, no other lines, okay? Now, John Deere has been in an uptrend for a while. So I'm gonna to have to squeeze in some data here to show other parts to this. But the reason why I mentioned this indicator is it does a very good job of identifying the current trend. In other words, if the price bars are above that cloud, you're in an uptrend. If the price bars are below that cloud, you're in a downtrend, okay? And if they ever overlap the cloud, then there is no trend, you shouldn't be trading there. So it's that simple. By adding one simple indicator like that, you can more, more often than not be trading with the current trend. And normally when you're trading with the current trend like that, it doesn't really matter where you buy along that trend, you usually end up making money, right? Especially if there's strong momentum behind it. How do we read momentum? Well, by the slope. So if you look at the indicator itself, you know, when the indicator is flat like that, right? There, usually there isn't a very strong trend and you can see throughout here, it was all pretty much flat. Only here did, did it drop, but there are other reasons that, that we will identify such as, you know, breaking these lows and having no support below, then that opens it up to a bigger move. But generally, if you just follow the slope of the actual indicator, so if you draw a line, along it, there's a nice slope higher. So there, that means you have some nice momentum to the upside. And so generally, as long as price remains above that shaded area, which we call the cloud, you know, of course there are gonna be minor pullbacks, but generally it, it tends to continue moving in that direction. You can see here, the trend is still very much intact, even though the rest of the market may be selling off pretty hard. I mean, today the Dow was what down six, seven hundred points at one point that I saw, right? And and it's been dropping for a few days now. Yet John Deere's held up very, very well. Yeah, it's we've had a bit of a pullback here, but nothing to to be concerned about. Nothing that would destroy the current trend. You know, if we look at something like the spies, for example, the S and P five hundred ETF. You can see that we have pulled back, no question. Are we in bear territory? Are we in a bear market territory? No, not yet. We're still just touching support, touching the cloud. So we may just bounce like we did back here, right? Or if it breaks through, well, now you know, it may be something a little more serious like it was back here last February, March, right? So are, are we going to see another you know, crash for lack of a better word, I'll call it, you know, 
if we break below the cloud? Well, the chances are much higher if we break the cloud. But as long as we hold the cloud, we'll most likely just bounce and move off to new highs, okay? So the cloud is definitely something you can use. Again, it's the Ichimoku cloud and all you want is the cloud portion. The other moving averages that go with it, you wanna mark invisible, okay? Now, you can also use just simple moving averages. So I'm gonna bring in one single moving average that I like to use. I, I have this on all my charts. Um, and that is the 20 period simple moving average based on the close. So it's a 20 simple moving average based on the close. Okay. Try to change the color here. Which color do I want? I oh, will try light blue. And let's see how that works. Yeah, there we go. So another way to trade now, you'll notice that the cloud was below this price the whole way. So it, it gives you a bit more of a buffer, right? It, it, it's a, uh, what's the word for it? It's a little looser than, than the, the 20 would be. The 20 is a little tighter. So it trails price a little closer, right? If you had a shorter term moving average, like an eight uh, period moving average, for example, it would follow price even closer, okay? I find the 20 to be super effective um, because most people look at the 20, both professionals as well, uh, as well as retail traders. So it's a moving average that is followed uh, by, by, by the masses. So I find that it works quite well. And again, all you wanna do with the 20 is two things. One, make sure you're on the right side. In other words, if price is above it, you wanna make sure you're trading to the long side. If price is below the 20, you wanna make sure you're trading to the short side, or at least not trading. If you don't wanna short the market, then you just stay out below the 20, but get back in when it, when it moves above the 20. The other is to trade with momentum, right? So again, if there's slope and you get an opportunity like this one here, where it dipped below and then move back above, that is a fantastic entry, right? It did it again here. But the second it moves below, you have to get out because you never know when this can happen, okay? So if you go back and you look at the past week, the past two weeks as the market, you know, has been more volatile, has been dropping, right? And you may have stuck with some positions, maybe because you like the story behind the stock, maybe because you believe it long-term. But go back, throw a 20 period moving average on there and have a look at how much money you would have saved had you just exited that position um, once it, it violated the 20, okay? Because remember, even if it's short lived, right? Like, like back in here, right? It dipped below, okay? And then it moved right back above. So if you exited here, you can get right back in here. So, you know, yeah, it'll cost you a few dollars in commission, maybe a few other dollars by exiting here and entering slightly higher. But overall, you are going to make way more on those trades than you ever will lose on these few days that you're out of the market. But what this does, remember, by being consistent with your, your strategy, right? You, you want to be disciplined and have a, a, a simple set of rules, but follow those religiously, right? If you do that, it'll save you this kind of pain because you never know. You never know. Look how many times before we dip below when nothing happened, right? Even a little, a little more, nothing happened. A little more, nothing happened here, here. This may end up being nothing, but we don't know that yet. It, it can just as easily come way back down here. So be consistent, okay? Again, the slope on the 20 really matters. The more significant that slope, the more momentum on your side, and the, the stronger the move should be in that direction, okay? You can also trade a moving average cross. How many of you have traded a, a, a cross in, in the past? Um, one sec, Jake, Jake uh, the other indicator, the cloud indicator was the Ichimoku Kinko Hyo indicator, the second one on the list here. And there are several parts to that indicator. Um, all I do is remove the single lines, the moving averages, and just leave the cloud portion. Um, don't worry, at the end of this, I am going to um, give you an opportunity to grab a, 
a, a course on that. It won't cost you anything. Okay, just just stay tuned till the end, and I'll you'll be able to uh, get a full course on the Ichimoku Cloud Indicator. Um, and uh, let's see, Jacob says the strategy of getting out when you fall below the twenty work when you are in a choppier consolidated market. Uh, or would you take many small losses? Fantastic question. I'm so glad you asked. Um, let's cover that. And I am actually going to use Microsoft for that. Great example here. Okay. So the reason why you want to trade when that 20 is sloping in your direction is that's when you have a consistent trend. That's when you know that either the bulls or the bears are fully in control. When you go through flat periods like this or what we call choppy periods, okay, if you just follow that, that rule of getting in above the 20 and getting out below and getting back in and out, you will be chopped around and you will lose a lot of money in there. The other rule that goes with this is don't trade when the moving average is flat, right? That way you avoid this full area here, okay? If the 20 is trading flat and not sloping, you don't want to be in it. So you might say, well, I would have missed this trade, right? Because I got in and it took off, uh, and, but the thing was flat. So how would I have caught this? Well, there are ways. One simple way is when you're identifying that consolidation phase here, when the 20 is flat, you wanna mark the high range of that area and you wanna mark the low range of that area. And whichever one breaks, wherever you get a break either above or below, that's when you want to trade with it. And usually when you get that, once you break that high, that 20 is started to slope in one direction or the other, right? So that's, that's one way. But if you focus just in this area, so whenever you see that slope, you just sit pa patiently and you wait for a close below and then a close back above, right? Close below, close back above. And you may never get it here. You may miss this one, but there's plenty of other ones you'll catch. So when you're trading this way, not only is it super simple to follow and super consistent, trust me, I've traded with this for decades, um, but it, it, it's, it's, the odds are so highly in your favor that just one winner will more, more than make up, you know, a, a few losses here. But overall, what you'll find is that you'll have way more winners than you when you have losers. Not only that, your winners are going to be much bigger than your losers. So the math is very much in your favor. Okay. And we'll talk about exits as well, um, keeping it very simple here. So I wanted to get to my next point, which is how many of you have tried to trade a moving average cross system, right? For some reason, a lot of people don't feel secure enough with one moving average. They like to have multiples, right? Either stacking them or just look for a moving average cross system. And you can do that as well. Um, let me throw on one other one here and show you how easy that is. So this is a 20 period. I'm going to throw on something much shorter. Let's say a five period. I'm still keeping it as a simple, you can do it as exponential, or you can do an eight EMA, whatever you prefer, really doesn't matter, okay? But here's the key. And actually, maybe I'll change the color on it. Um, let me see if I can change the color, make it a little more obvious. There we go. So the key here, let me zoom out and go back to John Deere. I think that was a better example. Yeah, here. So what you wanna look for when you're trading with two or more moving averages like that and you get a cross, it's not to enter when the cross happens. You don't wanna do that. What you wanna look for when a cross happens is you wanna to look to your left and find the most recent high pivot. And you only wanna trade when you break that high pivot. Okay, so when we cross here, right, did we break above a high pivot? No, we did not. So we did not want to get in there. And look, it was short lived and it pulled back. Actually closed below the 20 again, right? The five moved below the 20. Then it moved back above. 
Now, here's the previous high. Did we break above that? No, we did not. Then we pulled back. You see, so that simple rule helps you even avoid that chop, even though the 20 is telling us not to trade there at all because it's still flat, right? Now here we get across, here's that next high, right? If we draw a line across from that high and we wait for a break, we could have gotten in there. Would it have worked? Yeah, we made some, right? Um, at this point, you know, the 20 is sloping now. So if it pulls back and closes below, here it was intraday, it actually closed back above, so we would not have exited that. But if you exit on the, on you know, the, the move on the other side of the 20, you would have exited here, right? And so it would have been maybe a small winner, um, uh, you know, potentially a break even, not a big deal, right? Then you cross again here, you mark this high, take it across, you would have entered somewhere here. From here, we already have a nice slope and we carry on. And from here, we go on quite a run. Now, remember this area in here, okay? That's where we would have entered. Let's take the line to that previous high over here, right? Pretty close, isn't it? So look, if you look at that previous high, it's really only when we broke that that you really got a push. But at that point, you know, look at the slope on the 20. That's fantastic. And now, from now on, you know, any close below that 20, if you get it, and then a move back above, you get back in, right? Below, back in, and, and you go on quite a run. Right. So again, super simple. I prefer just one moving average. You can see with two, how much cloudier the chart already is. It really isn't as clear to me. Right. So I prefer to just have the 20 and keep it super simple, but it's completely up to you. I'll show you one more thing here with moving averages. And that is, uh, if I can find it here, the moving average ribbon. So um, I think, oh, there it is, the ribbon. So what a ribbon is, it's just an indicator that plots numerous moving averages at the same time. So if we look at this, we can say, I want, uh, let's see, eight different moving averages, and I'm going to space them 10 periods apart. And I'm going to start with the 10 period moving average. So in other words, what we're going to have is the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, right? All stacked. So I'm going to plot that on and here you go. So you can make them each a different color. You can have them all the same. But the way this helps here is that when they're stacked in the proper order, meaning the 10 above the 20, the 20 above the 30 and so on, that's when you have the strongest trend. Also, because you have all these moving averages together, when price moves within, in other words, below that first one, right? And within the, the, the moving averages, right? Becomes very cloudy, reminding you that you shouldn't trade in there. So all you need to do is wait for it to pop back out above all the moving averages. And then at that point, all you wanna do is look to see if they're stacked in the right order. And more importantly, is there a slope or not, right? Or are they flat? And here's the other helpful part of this, that when you have multiple moving averages like that in a ribbon, whenever there's that choppiness, like Jake was talking about, all the moving averages are going to be overlapping, right? They're all going to be overlapping. So they're not going to be stacked in the right order. So if you just follow that rule of having them stacked in the right order, you will avoid being chopped by the market all the time, right? So... Now you just wait for a slope, you wait for them to be stacked in the right order, and then you just wait for a little dip below and back out above, right? Dip below, back out above. And those are the areas that you trade. It really doesn't get any simpler than that, okay? So um, that is, is really a very easy way to trade with the trend, with momentum on your side, you can use, let's recap, an Ichimoku cloud indicator just for trend. And you wanna make sure you're on the right side. Of it. You can use just a 20 period simple moving average. Make sure you're on the right side. You wanna look for slope as well. Do not trade when that moving average is flat, okay? Um, you also wanna read the price action, right? And look for higher highs and higher lows. 
either on individual bars or from one pivot to the next, right? Higher highs from one high pivot to the next, higher lows from one low pivot to the next, et cetera. And, you know, the same goes for a down market. Now that, you know, we're starting to sell off, if this really does turn into a bear market, same rules apply only to the downside, right? In other words, if we sell off and uh, like back here, right? Last February, March, when we clear all of the moving averages, you know, we, we should drop. Now, again, when, when a, a steep sell-off happens, a quick sell-off happens like that, you are not going to get the moving averages all stacked in order, nor are you going to get them sloping because this was just a, a really sharp move lower. It's almost vertical, right? But if you look to your left here and you mark that low and there's nothing else below, right? No other support, then you pretty much know you're going for a ride. Okay? But in most cases on individual stocks, what happens on the long side, meaning you know, you're, you're, you're coming out of a downtrend and you're recovering, you move back above, but the moving averages are still intertwined, right? So you give it a little bit of time, you wait for the trend to, to um, fall into place. And then when these are stacked, then you take advantage of the place for the rest of that uptrend. So if we were in a serious downtrend here, there would have been the same sort of thing happen. This would have pulled back, then it went a little lower, then pulled back, then went a little lower. And by that time, the moving averages would have stacked, been stacked appropriately. And then you just take trade to trade from there, okay? Let me clear this off and show you a couple other things. So when it comes to exits, so now you've got a few simple entry techniques to use. And again, whether you use these ones or you use something like you just saw with Steve Primo, by the way, great guy, a friend of mine, um, very knowledgeable, uh, his stuff is fantastic. Um, it doesn't matter whether you already have a strategy that works great for you. You can just use this as a guide and keep that in mind. And if you want, use it as an exit, okay? Remember, you wanna be on the right side of the 20. So when price moves below, don't second guess it. Don't try to overanalyze the market. Think back to this week. How, how much have we heard about rising, uh, you know, yields going up and that's what's pressuring the market, right? Or maybe it was some other thing, you know, a, a jobless claims numbers or the ADP uh, non-farm payroll report came in weaker than expected, all this stuff. There's way too much to analyze and try to figure out what is going to affect the market today compared to yesterday or what, what's it going to be like tomorrow? It's impossible. Okay. Let's face it. None of us, and I mean, none of us know where the market is going tomorrow. We can only use our charts as a guide. Okay. And if you're into fundamental analysis, you can decide whether you're investing in a solid company or a weak company, but along the way, if you just throw that 20 period moving average on, and be in the stock when you're on the right side of it, meaning be long when price is above and be short when price is below, you're gonna do way better than just sitting through it, okay? You're gonna do way, way better. Now, so the 20 can be used as an exit, flat out. Now, it doesn't matter what approach you use to enter, if it closes below, you wanna be out of there, okay? On a, on a day like this where it, it dips intraday but then closes back above, you don't have to get out, okay? You can even, uh, something a little more effective is when it does dip below, and if, if it were to close there, let's say, even though this one did, if, if it were to close, mark that low. And if the next day or the next bar, you know, if you're trading a five minute, if the next bar moves below that level, then you get out. Because sometimes it's just a one bar thing, right? You, you, you dip. And you see like this one, if we had marked the low here, right? If you had marked that low there, you would have never exited because the next day it went higher. And from there on, it continued to go higher. Same thing here, right? You mark that low waiting to exit, but it just popped right back up and continued. So really from this entry here, you would have went all the way, you'd still be in this, right? And, and that's substantial. I mean, you're talking about going from 260 
Here we are, even with the pullback, we're at 337, and we're still in that. So very, very effective, very simple. The other thing you can do is the, the, the stronger the move is, okay, the more you want to capture profits. Because the when price moves away from the 20, it tends to snap back very quickly. And, and you know, whether there's news going on or something like, you know, the GameStop situation where it went parabolic, what happened? It came right back, right? Whenever it moves away, it snaps right back. And just as fast as it moves away, it snaps back. So you see here how it took its time to go up, but it also took its time to come back. Here, straight up, straight down, okay? And that's because of the lack of support behind. When it moves slowly, there's a little more support. There's more trades here. When you go straight up, it's just a, a quick push, and then it, it, it snaps back. So when you get that, you may want to tighten the moving average for your exit. Say put on an eight period moving average, for example. Let's just throw on an eight period and I'll show you how it'll follow the price a little closer. Okay? There it is. So it follows it a little closer. So you'd get out here instead of here, right? So yes, will it get you out of trade sooner? It will, but that's the whole point because you want to keep those profits, okay? So um, some very, very simple ways to trade the market. And I shouldn't even say trade the market, it's beat the market, because you really can with these simple techniques. It, it doesn't need to be any more complicated than this. It really does not. Now, over the years, as Roly was saying, I've been trading a very long time. I've used just about every indicator out there. I used to have numerous indicators on my chart at the same time, waiting for all of them to line up for a perfect entry, et cetera. Well, again, over the years, I've realized simple is best. So what I have found are two simple indicators that really, really work well together. Now, we've recently developed um, what you see on here, which is what we call the victory method. And we had a program on Metastock, and that's what these arrows and dots signify. This is when those two indicators line up. We, we get uh, some fantastic entries. Um, but again, you want to treat it the same way in conjunction with the 20. In other words, you do not want to take the signals that happen during a flat moving average. You only want to take the signals that happen during a, uh, a sloping moving average, right? So the, the arrows and the dots are the same thing. The difference is that once we're in a trade already and the same criteria lines up, we mark it as a circle instead of an arrow because we're already in the trade, okay? And once we're in a trade, if we're in a long trade, all the bars are painted green. If we're in a, a short trade, all the, the bars are painted red. Um, and that's to keep you disciplined and not get scared out of a trade once you see a few red bars go against you, right? But it's the same entry criteria here, 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 here. It's the same two indicators that line up. Okay, it's just that if you're already in a trade, now you may want to add to your trade here, or you just want to use this as confirmation that you should remain in the trade. Okay, um, now remember the moving average has to be sloping in your direction, though. So if you see a red arrow here, okay, and we go directly from long to short, we're actually not, not going to go short there because the moving average is not sloping lower. Okay, so we, we, we had no way of programming this um, uh, to um, remove those errors without missing um, certain opportunities. And uh, if I had more time, I could explain it in detail, but with the program, we had no choice with that. So again, um, you want to be trading with the rule, which is only during a, an upsloping 20, are you going to trade to the long side? And only during a downsloping 20 will you trade to the short side, okay? So let's look at the SPIs, for example, the S&P 500, right? You have an, a solid uptrend, okay? You're going to go with those signals. You're going to take this buy, this buy, this buy, okay? If you have a downsloping 20, you're going to take that sell, that sell, right? Then you get back in. And, and there, there are reasons why you might want to get into some of these symbols 
along the flat one. We have training material for that. But again, you don't have to go there. Why overcomplicate it? I stick to the ones that are with slope and that's all you need. And I can tell you, your degree of accuracy will be extremely high if you just focus on the opportunities that come along with an upsloping 20 or a downsloping 20, okay? Super simple. Now, this also has a scanner that comes with it and so on. And I'll tell you in a minute why I'm showing you this because uh, um, this wasn't the purpose of, of this um, presentation today. Again, that 20 or the moving average cross or just training with the cloud is all you need. That's really all you need. If you want to you know, improve your accuracy a little, uh, actually it's a little more than a little, but my point is even with these two indicators that we've programmed in here, that 20 is still super relevant and you should trade with it. So whether you're incorporating it into your own strategy, whether you're using it on its own, whether you trade it using our victory system, you should be trading with that 20, okay? And keeping trading super, super simple, all right? Um, and so again, uh, to recap, you know, the exits, even using a victory system like this, you know, when you, when you have a steep drop like that and you got short here, you bought puts here, you may want to scale out along the way, right? Or add an eight period moving average, right? To tighten your stop so that you're trailing it a little tighter so you can capture the majority of that profit. You know, if, if we wait, we might not exit until, until here, right? This is a little, it, it, it's loose compared to the eight, right? Because often when we're trading with an upsloping 20 like that, we get sustained runs. So you don't always want to get chopped out on a minor pullback. So we loosen up the exit a little so we can remain in those long runs. Because remember, if you're going to use the strategy consistently, then over time, right, um, you want to make sure you capture those big runs. That's where you're really going to make most of your money. So you want to stay in the trade as long as you can. But the sharper the move, okay, so look at that slope, right, compared to something like this, right? or even if we look at it in the other direction, right? A slope like this is significant, but it's nowhere near that significant. So the sharper that slope, the quicker you wanna capture profits and a great way is to scale out along the way. So if I'm entering 100% of my position here, you know, once we come down here, I'm gonna take a third, right? We go a little lower, I'm gonna take another third, then that final third, I'll let it run, you know? Or a great way, to do this also is if you plot that ADMA, um, you can take half your position once it closes, you know, on the other side of the ADMA and the other half if it closes on the other side of the 20. Okay, very, very effective method. And again, the key is keeping it consistent. Okay, consistent. Are there any, any symbols anyone's thinking of trading that you want me to pull up a chart of? I can show it, we can go over a few more uh, examples. Um, someone was asking what the dots are. The dots are the same same um, trade criteria that comes together with the arrows, both long and short. Um, it's just that when you're already in a trade, so here it was showing to get in, since we're already in that trade, if that criteria comes together again, the reason why we put dots there is to uh, for two reasons. One, if you're more of an aggressive trader, you may want to add to your position, okay? Increase the leverage on your trade. Or if you missed this entry, you don't miss the whole run, you get another shot at it. So again, keeping it simple here, if we just use that one rule, moving average is flat, we're not going to take that, right? Do we miss the whole run? No, because once it starts to slope and it pulls back like it regularly does, we get an, a, a chance to re-enter here and at least capture the second half of that move, okay? So it's the re-entry criteria. Okay, hey, Vince, it's uh, Raleigh here. Uh, yeah. In the chat panel, several people have typed in some ticker symbols. Uh, sure. Helene says, how about uh, AAPL, Apple, and SQ? Of course, let's have a look. <clears throat> so Apple, as you know, 
um, usually trends very well. So it's a great stock to trade. And as you can see going back, look, look at that 20. If we were on the right side of the 20, right? How much of this run would we have captured? Most of that, right? We would have been out here back in, in there, and then out here. You would capture most of it. Same like here, right? Now, the benefit of the victory system is that it identifies the key areas to enter again all the way through that run. So if you missed an, an original entry, you'd have another one and another one and another one and another one. So again, if you just trade where there's slope, it, let's go through this. Would this one have been a winner? Yes. This one, yes. This one, yes. Well, let's call it break even, maybe even a small loss, right? But then this one, yes. And if you compare the size of the winners compared to the losers, there's really no, no comparison. We would have entered short here. That would have been a nice one. This one, maybe a loser or break even, right? Either way, small loss. We get in here, we make that up, more than make it up. Then another one, another one, another one, another one, et cetera. We go flat on the moving average. We don't want to take any of these. We start to slope again. We take another one, right? Now, here's one that happened yesterday, right? We turned around and actually going back to the basics that we talked about earlier, right? If you follow the pivots, now we switched from higher highs and higher lows to lower highs and lower lows. And we have a down sloping 20. So now we get the criteria to enter we're in and today so far it is down to two points right very simple to follow very very easy let's look at square again during the strong trend that's when you want to trade but if you don't feel comfortable enough in being able to identify that trend just use the simple tools that we have the 20 just make sure you're on the right side and that it's sloping right the victory system will tell you where to get in. And look, all of these would have been winners, right? If you traded here without this or without um, that one rule of a flat 20, right? You would have been chopped around all throughout here. This is where most traders lose their money. We want to avoid all of that, okay? So not only can you chart this as a, as a channel, mark the highs of it, mark the lows and wait for a break, which would have helped you capture this, but... All you needed is a slope on the 20 and that re-entry dot and you're in. And again, you can be picky here. You can be selective. I am, right? This to me is not enough slope. So if I miss this, do I care? No, I don't. Because if it's a sustained run like this, there will be pullbacks and I will get other opportunities to enter. Okay. But if, if I just wait for that slope to be dramatic like that, then I know the probabilities of me turning a profit on these trades is overwhelming, okay? So here, even this on square, we sold off hard the last couple of days, right? So number one, if I was long and use the rule to get out on the other side of the 20, I would have saved myself that pain, right? I, I, you know, I would, have, would have given up some of the profits, but I would have um, you know, not taken a huge loss. But secondly, you know, just because it's telling me to go short, which way is the 20 pointing? Still pointing up, right? Flat at best. It's certainly not pointing down. So why would I short? So now this is at support. Is it going to bounce from here and go higher? Or is it going to break it? If it breaks it and continues to sell off, then that 20 is going to roll down, start sloping lower. And on the next pullback into the 20, I'm going to get a dot like that, a red dot, telling me it's now time to go short. And then off we go. I only want to trade when the odds are in my favor. Okay. And this does that for you. Sure. There's uh, several. You want to take a couple other symbols? Sure. Let's go ahead. Okay. Uh, A N T M. A N T M. Sure. So, what do we see by a chart like this? Very choppy, right? So we could use the same rules. Let's look for an entry on slope, right? When it's very choppy like that, chances are you don't get many. So it's going to help you avoid getting chopped around. There are a few. By the way, one thing I, um, I do want to tell you also is you want to look for 
the entries that happen near the 20, not far away. Okay, you might get a, a dot, but then get a gap up. You don't want to chase it. You want to you want to use the ones uh, that are nearby. So a chart like this isn't very clean, right? If I remove the indicators from this chart, are you going to be able to tell me what the current trend is? Can no we way. say there's a long trend or can we say there's a short trend? There really isn't. It's a big mess. That alone is a warning sign. Go to your next chart or change the time frame. Uh, I don't think I mentioned that you can use this on any time frame. So if we were to use it on a weekly, for example, you know, now, now you now you get some areas where, where there's a trend and so on, maybe a five minute, so on, whatever's your comfort zone. But um, e even if you avoid, I mean, even if you try to trade choppy charts, there aren't going to be many entries you're going to find with this because um, the rules of only trading when you have that slope in your favor keep you out of most of the mess. Sure. And it jumps right out at you, doesn't it? Right. As it really we does. brought the screen up, it was like, whoa, let's find something else like NEO, N-I-O. Yeah. NEO is a, a great stock still is. I, I traded that a lot last year. Uh, right through through this area here. Um, and I mean, you get some great sustained runs. And again, the reason why we color the bars all one color is so that you don't get scared out. So these minor blips in here don't worry you at all, right? I mean, again, you want to scale out of some of your profit along the way because you never know when it's going to turn. But if it does turn and you see a red arrow or you see an exit flag or it just closes below the 20, get out of there and avoid this happening to you right mm -hmm. look this if you just follow that one rule on that first bar marking that low and getting out here you would have got out around 57 it's right now at 39 right would have saved you a lot of pain excellent so if you're up for a few more uh let's see sebi says how about r e t o reto I'm not even sure what these companies are. But. Yeah. yeah, a lot of times I trade them when I don't know what they are either. Um, yeah. I really don't care what they do or what they're, you know. You no, know, because this chart tells you everything you need to know. Right. And who cares what the PE ratio is or anything else? I mean, you know, by all means, do your homework and, and you know, try to select the best companies. But it really doesn't matter. Look, again, very messy, right? Do we want any any part of this? No, we don't, Right. But if we had just focused on, on, on the sloping areas, we'd still do okay. Now, keep in mind, this is a penny stock. So I, I personally wouldn't short anything under 30. So I'm not going to short something that's 80 cents, but you can if you want. But uh, what often uh, I find often with penny stocks is they will uh, just do nothing for the longest time, right? And so then when, when there's news, or chatter on social media and they start to move, as soon as they break the high of that, you know, that history, uh -huh. uh, they tend to take off. And you can see that here, it took off. Now, again, do I want to chase this thing? Do I want something that far away from the 20? I do not because it tends to snap back. Okay. Now I'm very conservative. So someone more aggressive might want to jump on that. Now it's pulled back and it's giving you another opportunity, but even back here, just looking at that slope, you get that re-entry here. Um, you'd still be in that trade, right? I, I would hope you would have gotten out here once it gapped in your favor and giving you an enormous profit. But, it, it, you know, do we see a red arrow? No. Do we see an exit? No. Has it closed below the 20? No. And in fact, the 20 is sloping even more than it was here. So from about 80, 90 cents, you went as high as 370. It's still at $2 here, 199. Um, plenty of profit there for you. Sure. A question just came in from Jake. He says, can you tell us what generates the dots for secondary entries? It looks like these would be great to either add to your position or even maybe sell a credit spread. Uh, absolutely. I, unfortunately, I can't. It is, it is proprietary, that formula with the, with the two. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not even selling this today. I'll tell you how, if you want more information on it, you can. But Today, I really wanted to focus on those simple little sure. things that you can use to improve your trading. If you're interested in this, I'll tell you how to get more information. But what the reason why I put this together really was late last year. Um, 
And to me, the market felt like it was changing. Uh, I thought we were in for a lot more volatility in the year or two ahead. And I wanted something that would be super responsive for me, uh, but still keeping that simplicity portion and making the chart look very clean. So to me, by just putting these arrows and dots alone, um, you know, I, it avoids me throwing other indicators on, et cetera. And, and again, this is all you really need. Sure. Well, you know, it attracts the eye. It attracts the right. attention of what's going on. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's see here. James said, what about ARKK? Oh, ARK, uh, yes. The ARK Innovation Fund. Kathy Wood, fantastic. Um, again, if we, if we just focus on the areas where they're slope, right? Um, you know, would we have had winning trades in here? Absolutely, we would have, right? And... Again, with the training that comes with this uh, indicator, we, we tell you which one of the, the arrows you want to trade when it's flat. And that, that's really breaking the previous high, especially if it's an all-time high. Just remember that. A break into an all-time high means there's no resistance overhead, right? Mm -hmm. So if you see that entry here and it's flat, you don't want to jump in. But if you suddenly break out to an all-time high, and look at the 20 at that point, right? So... What is your risk to reward? Your risk is that it turns and closes below the 20, which is nearby. So you're not taking much risk. Your reward though, with that kind of slope is that this carries on for a while. And in fact, it did all the way up here. We would have gotten out, gotten back in here with slope, made more. Out, back in, made more. Now you're out saving you this misery. We're not wow. short yet the ARC funds, we're not, but we're out of the, the ARC funds at this point. Sure. And, you know, a uh, quick comment here from Jake. I love this question because it's we all wonder this. Is there a way to tell which is the best stock to trade? Seems to me the steeper the trend in a case like this, the better. But often when the average is already steep, it might be too late to enter. Uh, correct. So there's a difference between steep and far away from the 20. OK, so if you look at something like GameStop, right? You know, when it gets that far away, it's going to snap right back. So you can look at that and say that's steep. But if we were up here already, you would not want to chase that. You definitely do not want to chase that. Okay. So there, there is a big difference. When you're talking about steep, uh, sorry, that's not the one I wanted to show you. Let's look at John Deere again. You know, we're talking steep, but close to the 20. There's mm -hmm. no danger there. That's mm -hmm. very much in your favor. That's just a solid um, uptrend, sustained uptrend. Look at the volume. When you have a sustained trend like that, you're not going to get big volume. Low volume like that, steady volume, is exactly what you want to see. Um, consistent volume means a continuation of that trend. Big spikes like that mean a deviation to the trend. So if you notice, if you mark the average here, we were pretty average. Now suddenly, you start getting increased and you know we, we go away and, and snap back. So suddenly the trading's a lot more volatile here than it has been all along. And you can read that with volume as well. But either way, following these rules, you know, you're not gonna run into a lot of trouble because the second it, it changes color, it gets you, you know, moves below the 20, you're gonna be out of there. Sure. Anyway. Yeah. Well, fantastic. You know, my gosh, Vince, what a presentation. What a great way to demonstrate what you pulled together. It's great when you can interact with people and say, hey, shoot me, shoot me some stocks and things of that nature. And sure. from that standpoint, we'd be really interested to see what your special offer is. Here. Yeah. So I, we, we have a, a training course called the Magic of, of Price Action. This takes it right to the basics, right? Talking about keeping it simple. It doesn't get any simpler than this. What we do is, is teach you to read the, the markets like I did a, a bit at the beginning, just using the bars, right? So we'll show you how to read the markets bar by bar, but also add in trend lines, right? The basics of technical analysis, show you two techniques that you can use with trend, trend lines to find those great trades. Um, we're gonna show you how to identify channels and how to trade them. And then one of my favorites is and this ages me a, a, a bit, but regardless, <laughs> it's a, a, a strategy we used to use 
before we had all these fancy software packages with charting platforms, right? We used to, believe it or not, Roly, create our own charts with a pencil and a ruler when I first started. <laughs> yes. Okay. Point so, and finger charts, right? <laughs> yeah. Every night you'd get the closing prices, right? And and you would you would plot them on it and, and you, with your pencil and your ruler, you'd mark your trend lines. And but I have a strategy that I used back then that is just as effective today. It doesn't get any simpler than that. And you now, I'm not saying you're going to get a pencil and a ruler out and draw your own charts. You're going to use your charting platform, but it, it's going to be super simple. I'll show you that. We'll also include three money management techniques so that, you know, you're, you're putting the right amount in each trade. The last thing you want to do is, you know, get overexcited about how well these setups work and then put 50 or hundred percent of your account in one trade and have that be the one losing trade, right? You don't want that. You want to trade with proper money management. So we'll give you strategies around that. Then I mentioned earlier that I'd give you the chance to, to get that Ichimoku course for free. And we will include that in here for free. The Ichimoku cloud indicator is a strategy in itself if you include the other portions that I, I made invisible there during that example. So we have a whole course dedicated to how that can be a strategy in itself. We'll throw that in. And then we'll also give you 30 days of membership to our pro service. Now, that's where the victory system comes in, okay? If you want a copy for yourself, you can email us and we'll tell you how to get one. But just by, by joining us here for this package, for the next 30 days with our members, by you becoming a pro member, um, we meet with our members three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for an hour, hour and a half each time, where we go over numerous charts, numerous trade opportunities, and we share the scans from the victory method and we share the trades we're taking at that time with the victory method. So those will, will be sent to you. We'll also send you an email with those uh, setups as well that we're taking. Also during those sessions, we share uh, dark pool activity and unusual, and op unusual options activity. If you trade options, you may be interested in that. So we really thought we'd pack this together and it's only $3. I should have given you the address it is westmarktrading.com forward slash Vora, westmarktrading.com forward slash Vora. And, um, you know, you get all of that for, for three bucks just to try it out. And uh, hopefully you'll see what we do and enjoy it. But uh, um, yeah, if there's any more questions, I'd be happy to, uh, to answer them. I think that basically, let me check the chat panel here real quick here. Because you covered so much, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Vince, there was just a ton of questions about, obviously, the indicators and things of that nature. But I think that I think that basically covers it. And once again, thank you so much for your time today. I mean, I know how busy you are. And it's always it's just always wonderful to get to see you, Vince. And I just love the way you present. Once again, you have a very, very straightforward, logical approach to the market. You've built charts and strategies and indicators that that make it even easier for your students and uh, for your traders to be able to follow what you do. And all this for three dollars. My gosh. <laughs> well, thank you again for having me. And I, I really hope that uh, that everyone gets some value out of it. But I enjoyed it. I always do. Thanks again. And hope to be back uh, soon. Thank Take you. care. See you, Vince. Care, guys. Okay, so I'm going to grab the screen here. Do, do, do. And there you go. So once again, folks, that was Vince Farah <clears throat> with Trading Wins, uh, Magic of Price Action, Techniques for Finding Trend Lines, Tips for Finding the Best Trading Channels, Three Money Management Techniques. He talked about the Ichimoku course and a ton of other bonuses that are in there. If you go to westmarktrading.com forward slash Vora. It'll take you right there. It's a $3 introduction to the kind of services that Vince provides. And I thought that he just did a terrific job. And you know, Pat, it is three o'clock our time, four o'clock on the East Coast. We have one more quiz in us. Great 